Holy crap, a K-SKU unlocked processor as an i3. This is exciting. But that's not all. It also comes with hyper-threading. That's right, two cores, four threads, one i3, 7350K. This launch from Intel may be a bold response to the looming threat that is AMD's Ryzen release. Or maybe it's simply a follow-up to the Pentium G3258 Anniversary Edition, an overclockable dual core that lacked hyper-threading, presenting some pretty serious issues in some modern games that wouldn't even launch unless they detected four processor threads. Like Far Cry 4, for example, which does work with the 7350K. So it's a category killer then? Well. Maybe not. The G3258 was $75, and the i3-7350K is $180. And hyperthreads are still not real cores, which you can learn more about up here. But for now, let's see how worth it the first unlocked Core i3 really is. Okay, to start us off, there's the specs. It's got two cores and four threads, like I mentioned earlier, but it also has four megabytes of cache, so it's exactly half of a Core i7-7700K in every way thus far. But the story changes when you look at clock speed. A 7700K boosts to 4.5 gigahertz. A 7350K drops that down, but not by much, just to 4.2 gigahertz. And that's also not the whole story. If someone buys a K-series i3, I fully expect and hope that they plan to overclock it. That's the whole point. So anyways, I got mine up to 5 gigahertz easily with 1.4 volts, but with some tuning I'd expect that you'd be able to drop that down to like 1.35 volts or maybe even lower. I stress tested it for a long time and it was rock solid. I'm not the only one either. People are getting 5 gigahertz on this chip all over the internet. It's an exciting time to be an i3. Like before though, you'll need an overclockable chipset, so Z series. If you want to learn more about the Z270 motherboards, the updated onboard graphics, and the finer details of Intel's latest platform, check out this video up here. But okay, enough of that. Let's talk about performance. This is not an easy answer. I put our 7350K on the bench along with an ASUS ROG Z270 Maximus 9 code, 16 gigs of G-Skill DDR4 RAM, a Corsair H100 GTX V2 Extreme, and a Founders Edition NVIDIA GTX 1080 just to remove potential GPU bottlenecks in games. On the same setup, I also ran a Core i5-7400 100. The 7400 is a true quad core with four total threads that costs $182, just $2 more than the 7350K. To do this, we used the 7700K and adjusted hyper threading settings and multiplier settings to get pretty much equivalent performance. It works, trust me. And if you don't believe it, check out this video. Remember, no K, so no overclocking. It's not an option for most people. The first comparison that I want to do between our 7400 and our 7350K is Cinebench. The 7350K has a way higher clock speed at 5 gigahertz versus 3.5, so it should crush in single core performance, and it did. So all is well, except that it also crushed in multi-threaded. Those speedy little hyper-threaded cores not only crushed in Cinebench, but also pulled the victory in our 7-zip test and our GIMP image editing through ASUS ROG RealBench. That's four to zero so far. But before you go out and spend your $182 on an i3-7350K and two cans of pop, there is also video encoding to consider. The i5-7400 did win the RealBench encoding tests, but not by much. Then there's gaming. Ah, man, there is no difference between either of these processors or the top of the line 7700K when testing Deus Ex Mankind Divided. So I guess I can go ahead and never test that when comparing CPUs ever again. So anyways, moving on. In GTA 5, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Ashes of the Singularity, average performance was very similar. There were some differences in minimums with the 7350K falling behind, although it was a little inconsistent and not that major either way. 
So in conclusion, the Intel i3-7350K costs more than we feel like it should, but I was also expecting it to not be that great, considering quad cores have been considered the minimum for gaming for quite some time now. But it destroyed, so that's pretty cool. Other things to consider could be DirectX 12 and Vulkan, but I don't expect those to have performance impacts in actual games for quite some time now. And then there's Ryzen. If you're looking to upgrade your rig anytime soon, you should probably wait for Ryzen. Let's all hope that's a strong launch. TunnelBear is the simple VPN app that makes it easy to browse privately and enjoy a more open internet. With TunnelBear turned on, your Wi-Fi connection is secured and your online activity is kept private from your internet provider, advertisers, hackers, and anyone looking to track or profit from your data. TunnelBear has a top-rated privacy policy and does not log your activity, and you can try for free with 500 megabytes and no credit card required. And if you do choose to get unlimited data, you can save 10% by going to tunnelbear.com LTT. Thanks for watching guys, if this video sucked you know what to do, but if it was awesome get subscribed, hit that like button or check out the link for where to buy stuff like processors in the description down below. If you want to discuss this video on the forum you can also do that down there, there should be a link. And we have a, a link to buy our super cool shirts also down there, which you can totally check out. Please don't pay attention to the one that I'm wearing, just click the link and I'll see you next time. You can watch this video, which is also on a processor. Bye!